Hello everyone, you are welcome to solve this nice algebra problem, which is 4 to the power of n plus 3 to the power of n, this is equal to 91. What is the value of n given that n is an element of positive integers? Now let's provide a solution from here. Now we start by expressing 4 to the power of n as 4 to the power of n raised to the power of 1, then plus 3 to the power of n raised to the power of 1, this is equal to 91. Now, we can express 1, this is the same thing as 1 over 3, multiplying by 3. Let's substitute this, so that we have 4 to the power of n, raised to the power of 1 over 3, times 3, then plus 3 to the power of n, raised to the power of 1 over 3, times 3, this is equal to 91. This is in the form of a, to the power of n raised to the power of m which we can express as a to the power of n times m applying this identity then here we have 4 to the power of n over 3 raised to the power of 3 then plus 3 raised to the power of n over 3 then raised to the power of 3 this is equal to 91 the next step is that we can let 4 to the power of n over 3 be equal to x and we can let 3 to the power of n over 3 be equal to y. We have that x comma y, these are members of positive integers and that x is greater than 0 and that y is greater than 0. Now, let's, sub let's express this equation here in terms of x and y so that we have x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3. This is equal to 91. Now, x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3. This is actually the sum of two cubes that is expressed as a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, which we can express as a plus b. Into the parentheses, a to the power of 2 minus a times b plus b to the power of 2. Now, applying this identity, then we have x plus y multiplying by x to the power of 2 minus x times y plus y to the power of 2. This is equal to 91. We have that x plus y. This is less than x to the power of 2 minus x times y plus y to the power of 2. Now, now the next step is to determine the prime factors of 91, where we have 91 times 1, this is equal to 91, then we have 1 times 91, this is equal to 91, then we have 13 multiplied by 7, this is equal to 91, and we have 7 multiplied by 13, this is equal to 91. Now, given the condition that x plus y is less than x squared minus xy plus y to the power of 2. So this means that 91 is greater than 1. So this is rejected. We have 1 is less than 91. So this is accepted. This is case 1. Then we have 13 is greater than 7. So this is also rejected. Then 7 is less than 13. And this is accepted. So we have two cases here. Let's start with case 1. Now in case 1, we have x plus y multiplied by x to the power of 2 minus xy plus y to the power of 2. This is equal to 1 multiplied by 91. So this means we have x plus y. This is equal to 1. Here we have x to the power of 2 subtract x times y, then plus y to the power of 2, this is equal to 91. Now, let's expand this equation here, which is x plus y raised to the power of 2, this is equal to 1 to the power of 2. Now, this is x to the power of 2, plus 2 times x times y, then plus y to the power of 2, this is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. Now, from this equation here, we have x to the power of 2 minus xy plus y to the power of 2. 
this is equal to 91. And we have x to the power of 2 plus 2xy, then plus y to the power of 2, this is equal to 1. So these are systems of two linear equations. So let's subtract these two equations here. x squared minus x squared, this is 0, minus xy minus plus 2xy, this is minus 3xy. y squared minus y squared, this is 0, 91 minus 1, this is equal to 90. So we have minus 3xy, this is equal to 90. So let's divide by minus 3 and minus 3 here. So that now x times y, this is equal to minus 30. Now, given that x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, so this means that the multiplication of x and y this is supposed to give us a positive value. Remember, this is positive and this is negative. So we find that this equation here is not possible. So case one is rejected. Case one is rejected. Let's proceed to case two from here. In case two, we have x plus y multiplied by x to the power of two minus x times y plus y to the power of 2, this is equal to 7 multiplied by 13. Now we have x plus y, this is equal to 7. x squared minus x y times plus y squared, this is 13. Now from the first equation here, let's square on both sides here. So that now, we have here, this is x to the power of 2, plus 2 times x y, then plus y to the power of 2, this is equal to 7 squared, which is 49. Now, we have this equation here, which is x to the power of 2 minus x times y, then plus y to the power of 2, this is equal to 13. And we have x to the power of 2 plus 2xy, then plus y to the power of 2, this is equal to 49. So this, again, these are systems of Turing equations. So let's subtract these two equations here. x squared minus x squared, this is equal to 0. Minus xy minus plus 2xy, this is minus 3xy. Then y squared minus y squared, this is equal to 0. And this is equal to 13. Minus 49, this is minus 36. So we have minus 3xy, this is equal to minus 36. Let's divide both signs by minus 3. So that now, we have that x times y, this is equal to, that is minus and minus simplify, that is 6 divided by 3, this is 12. So we have x times y is equal to 12. The next step from here, we can make x to be the subject of the formula. So let's divide both signs by y, and this means that x is equal to 12 divided by y. Now, if you recall, if you recall, we have that x plus y, this is equal to 7. Let's substitute x with 12 over y, so that we have 12 over y plus y, this is equal to 7. Y is our number, this is over 1, 7 is our number, so this is over 1. Let's multiply everything here by y, so times y, and here times y. So y and y simplifies, so we have 12 plus y to the power of 2. This is equal to 7 times y, which is 7y. Let's take 7y on the left hand side, so that now we have y squared minus 7y plus 12, this is equal to 0. So this is a quadratic equation. We can solve this quadratic equation by factorization method, where we have the product, product here is 12, we have the sum is equal to minus 7. So we need to identify two factors. If we multiply these two factors, we get a value of 12 
if we sum these two factors, then we get a value of minus 7. So these factors are minus 3 and minus 2. This is minus 3 and minus 4. So we have that minus 3 times minus 4. This is 12. Minus 3 plus minus 4. This is minus 7. So let's substitute these two factors. So that now we have y squared minus 3y minus 4y plus 12. This is equal to 0. So we have got two parts here. From the first part here, y is common. So we factor out y. So this is y minus 3, minus 4 is common here, so minus 4. Into the parentheses, this is y minus 3, this is equal to 0. So y minus 3 is common here, so we have y subtract 3, y minus 4, this is equal to 0. So this means that we have y subtract 3, this is equal to 0, and y minus 4, this is equal to 0. So we have that y1 is equal to 3 and y2 is equal to 4. So we can solve for the corresponding values of x. If you recall, we have x is equal to 12 divided by y. So we have x1 is equal to 12 divided by 3. So 12 divided by 3, this is equal to 4. So the first set of x1 and y1, this is equal to 4, comma, 3. Now, given that y2 is 4, this means that x2 is equal to 12 divided by 4. And if you simplify here, 12 divided by 4, this is 3. So we have the second set of x2 here, comma, y2, this is equal to, 3, 4. This is the second set of values of x and y. Now, if you recall, if you recall, we have seen that we can relate, we have 4 to the power of n over 3, b equal to x, and we let 3 to the power of n over 3, b equal to y. Now, let's substitute the first set of solution here. Now, we have 4 to the power of n over 3. This is equal to x, which is 4. And we have 3 to the power of n over 3. This is equal to y, which is 3. Now, this means that 4 is raised to the power of 1, and 3 is raised to the power of 1. So, the bases are common here. That is a to the power of n. This is equal to a to the power of m. Since the bases are common, exponent n is equal to m. Applying this property, then this means that we have n over 3. This is equal to 1. So this means that n over 3, this is equal to 1. So let's multiply both sides by 3. So that now, the value of n is equal to 3. The value of n is equal to 3. We can also check with n, that is 3, to the power of n over 3. This is equal to y. y is equal to 3. 3 is raised to the power of 1. And applying this property here, since the bases are common, n over 3, this is equal to 1. Multiplying 3 on both sides, this means that n is equal to 3. So we have the value of n here equal to 3. Now we have that n is equal to 3. Now when x2, y2, when this is equal to 3, comma 4, and given that 4 to the power of n over 3, this is equal to x, which is 3. And given that 3 to the power of n over 3, this is equal to y, which is 4. Now, if you check here, we have got different bases here. And we have that due to different bases, due to different bases, 
then there is no integer solution there is no integer solution that can be obtained from this two set of x2 and y2 from here so this means that x2 y2 which is 3 4 this is rejected this is reje rejected so we have that n is equal to 3 now let's check if this value of n satisfies the equation if you recall we have 4 to the power of n plus 3 to the power of n this is supposed to give us a value of 91 so 4 to the power of 3 plus 3 to the power of 3 this is supposed to give us a value of 91 4 to the power of 3 we have 4 to the power of 3 this is 64 then plus 3 to the power of 3 this is 27 this should give us a value of 91 now we have 7 plus 4 this is 11 so we have one here 6 plus 2 this is 8 plus 1 this is 9 so we have 91 is equal to 91 so the left add side is equal to the right add side and this proves that the value of n which is equal to 3 satisfies the equation so can you follow the steps like this video and can you subscribe see you in the next video thank you for watching